As you may have seen in the title of this video, this is a tribute to a fallen YouTuber. I personally have not had any interactions with Mitten Squad other than finding his channel and being inspired by him to pursue this type of content creation like these video game challenge runs, but I will do my best to keep a spark of his alive while I make my stupid jokes and play games incorrectly in the future. In my doing research for this video to make sure that I don't slander Paul, or Mitten Squad, I couldn't find much. There were a few articles I found, which are linked below, that told similar tales. If you have any personal interaction with Paul of Mitten Squad and feel comfortable enough to share them, please feel free to in the comments below. One final piece of setup information before I start talking about what I could find for his story, I won't be monetizing this video. I don't feel it's right that I could make money off of tributing another content creator that I look up to. So instead, I ask you to find a charity that supports drug and alcohol rehabilitation. Please support them. Even if it's something as little as making a social media post about them and the work that they do. As of writing this script, I have not researched any facilities, but there should be one on screen that I made a small donation to for this video. If you made it this far, thank you. I don't expect you to stay for the whole video, but I just wanted to share my appreciation for this individual and all the people he has inspired his time here on YouTube. Mitten Squad, otherwise known as Paul, started YouTube in 2013. For almost a decade, he's been making content. He started out with Let's Plays, and over the time became known for his challenge run videos for a multitude of games, mostly for Bethesda titles. Unfortunately, in 2022, he tweeted he was struggling with alcohol addiction, but it seemed like he was making significant progress in late 2023. With his most recent community post stating, and I quote, I've been drinking lately, but it's a bit less than it was for most of this year. In late November, this post was made. Three weeks later, he would have passed away. In his obituary, it was stated that he has passed because of pancreatitis, which he got from his excessive drinking habits. There were times where he addressed his community and was vulnerable with them, talking about his addiction, and he was honest with us all telling him that he would take breaks from content creation to focus on getting better, curbing his addiction, and the cycle happened a couple of times, at least. However, the damage to his pancreas was already done, and in December 14th of 2023, Paul of Mitten Squad passed away at the age of 27. While his life was cut short because of his addiction, he never stopped trying to be a bright light in our lives, giving us joy, laughter, and fond memories with all of the work he's done and all the videos that he's put out. If you or somebody you care about is struggling with any sort of addiction, please reach out to the company on screen. They have people available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, for both English and Spanish speakers. As I continue into the gameplay and the concept of this video, I will be trying to splice in different clips of Mitten Squad's Fallout 4 videos into this one. So for those of you who haven't seen any of his content and enjoy those little snippets, can go watch his videos and see what unfortunately was taken from us too soon. Thank you again for watching, and now I will transition into the gameplay and the information for the challenge run. For this challenge, I wasn't thinking anything too crazy. The only three that I'm implementing are, I must always be under the effects of some kind of alcohol at my earliest convenience, I cannot fast travel, and I have to maximize my charisma stat as early as possible. These are simple stipulations and nothing super game breakingly difficult. I just wanted to show how much of an impact having an alcohol addiction can hinder not only you in a video game, but also your daily life. With the rule of fast travel, I will be intaking more drinks than if I were to just pop open a bottle and fast travel and then pop, to no and pop another one as I got there because the effects would have worn off. I also decided against the fast travel as life is not about the destination, but about the journey to get there. There are times in life where we don't realize we made it to the peak of where we were headed because the journey was so unexpected and difficult. It's only after we stop and look back that we realize all of the things that led us to where we are right now. I also wanted to maximize my charisma because like most people, I assume Paul was just kind of an average guy when he decided to start YouTube one day. Only having his hard work and dedication, he became the charismatic man we all learned to watch and laugh with. 
This is a nice segue into the beginning of the challenge. Kind of. As any normal character run would be, I try to make myself as close to Mr. Mitten Squad as possible. I don't think I did a good job because the Fallout 4 character creator can be a little annoying to work with at times, but I at least hopefully did a passable job. I awoke in the bathroom and discovered how truly beautiful I am. Once created, we wake up from our frozen slumber and assign our special stats. I, of course, name myself Paul in remembrance of Paul, and then create the average Joe of a character. As I said earlier, Paul was just a normal person before starting YouTube. It was only after he did that he became more charismatic for everybody that watched him and grew to love his sense of humor. I will mention this now, every level I get will go into the charisma stat until the stat itself is maxed out, so there will be roughly 6 levels of progression with no skills gained just being pumped into charisma. Speaking of experience, since there is no reason I should be keeping the rad roaches alive in the vault, I'm able to kill them with my fists, baton, and later, my pistol as I walk towards the exit. Exiting the vault and I immediately head for Sanctuary. Not for Codsworth, but for the special book raising my charisma by one. And the underground bunker near one of the houses, hoping that they would have some sort of alcohol so I can officially start the challenge before making it to a vendor. Thankfully they did. On my way to Trudy's Diner, hoping she sells alcohol, I stop by Trash Can Carla to talk. Unfortunately, I spam through the dialogue options and accidentally extort money from her and get in her bad graces. I was really banking on her traveling around and me being able to pick up what I could from her, but I guess I'm just gonna have to suffer without this for the run. After Carla, I got to my destination of Trudy. My goal was to defuse the situation before both parties got angry, Wolfgang and Trudy, but I don't usually remember how to do that, so I decided to side with Trudy and fend, off Wolf and fend off Wolfgang. I think I picked the right choice, as Trudy does sell alcohol, and I think Wolfgang may have only sold me chems, so I don't do a lot of research when I make these videos, I just do enough research. Anyways, I set a pin in the area that I thought Diamond City was located in, and went on my way. As I'm walking there, I come across a scuffle between some scavengers and some robots. My plan was to shoot the robots first, as they had a Mr. Gutsy and a Protectron, and my current level, those are very difficult enemies. Apparently, the scavengers have never heard of the quote, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, because they immediately turned on me when they heard me shooting. So I was stuck whittling down the Mr. Gutsy and the Protectron with my pitiful weapons while they were able to rest and relax in whatever afterlife they believed in. I made an educated guess as to where Diamond City was. I was actually looking for Park Street Station so I could rescue Nick Valentine. I'd have settled for either of them. Well, I took a wrong turn or something because I ended up in the glowing sea. Don't waste your time asking how the hell I got so far off track, because I have no idea. Turns out the pin I put down was wrong, so I corrected it and actually started heading towards Diamond City after the robots. I make it inside, and after I talk to a lot of the normal vendors in the middle of the square, I remember that Diamond City has an actual bar that I can go into. When I walk in, there's a disagreement happening between the bartender and a patron, but it doesn't bother me too much because I'm here for the drinks, not the show. After getting the drinks, I stop by the detective agency and agree to go get Nick. While I'm clearing out the Triggerman, I don't know if this is going to show in the background footage, but I'm not playing optimally. I mean, I suck at video games, but what I was going for was that I'm not only healing with items that will not give me radiation poisoning. I'm just scarfing down whatever I can to help me get out of the jam and refill my health, not thinking about the future consequences of my actions. I know I might get heavy handed with the self-help talk here, but I feel like I have to with this type of video and why this video exists in the first place. We lost somebody to alcohol abuse. Plain and simple. This person has a YouTube channel and that's why it's got brought up in the news. There are a lot of people that don't get that luxury. And it's unfortunate because their yesteryear's actions finally caught up to them, even though there were steps attempted to start the healing process. It was too late. The damage was already done. If you are struggling or know somebody who is struggling, please seek out trained professionals. It might not be too late to start the healing process and get out of the funk that you or that individual may be in. 
Finishing up the rescue mission in the vault, I save Nick from the locked door and then encounter Skinny Malone. He wasn't one for talking, so I had to end up putting a few extra ounces of lead into him and changing his title from Skinny Malone to Not So Skinny Malone. Spent about 90 seconds staring at a loading screen, which happened a few times throughout this run. Getting out of the underground tunnel and I tell Nick I'll meet him at his agency. I don't know if he would have fast traveled us there if I said yes, or if he would have just become a companion as we walked there, but either way I wanted to journey alone and make my way back to the map point in Diamond City, not having to rely on my fantastic sense of directions. Making it back to the agency and I go through Nick's questionnaire, mention Kellogg, and we're headed to his house. Knocking and asking for a cup of sugar doesn't turn out well as he's not home and we have to find another way in. Being told that the mayor might have the key, I stop by his receptionist and trip and drop a couple handful of caps. She decides that they are hers and drops the key to Kellogg's house in her hasty rush for the pile of caps on her desk. Making it back to the house and I find a funny button under a desk, pressing it and a secret door opens up in the wall. I immediately go for the healing supplies and the ammo sitting on the shelves, then pick up the cigarettes and start the next section of the escort mission giving the newly found dog a puff of the cigarette, and he runs off to find more. I think he now has rich taste when it comes to smoke-producing sticks, other than the simple gas station ones you can get down at your local Tesco. Cutting the adventure through the Commonwealth with Dogmeat and going right to Fort Hagen, I talk to Dogmeat and tell him to go home at my earliest convenience. This is a solo run. I love dogs. I'm sure Paul did too. But this is Paul's story, not Paul's story featuring dog meat. Running through the fort and I pick up an institute rifle. This is one of the stronger weapons that I will use for the rest of the run. I also find a slightly stronger weapon that I use to separate Kellogg from some of his limbs and I only had one shot for it so after shooting it I just dropped it and it helped out when it mattered but I don't need it anymore. Getting back to Nick and I pull a few brain bits off of my shoes to show him what's left of Kellogg. He tells me to go to the memory den in Good Neighbor and see if the doctor there can get any information out of them. I thought it was a little weird, but I'm no man of science, so on my way I go. As I'm walking, I fight some super mutants. Nothing too crazy, right? I thought so, but after killing them, running into a few of the wild mutts, I'm targeted by the Brotherhood of Steel. I don't know what I did to deserve the wrath of the United States military, but apparently I stole their favorite flavor of crayon. Continuing through that debacle, I mark Good Neighbor on the map and start following the Freedom Trail. Surprisingly, or unsurprisingly if you know how this game goes, the trail takes me to the Old North Church. Getting rid of a few of the holy patrons that want to make sure I don't blaspheme, I solve the secret riddle in the basement and meet the railroad. In true Mitten Squad fashion, I get rid of them before continuing. And, as usual, Glory is the worst because her minigun and her fancy jacket that absorbs plenty of damage. A funny thing happening when I went inside of the railroad headquarters was Pam didn't know what to do. I started shooting her and then she just kind of ran around like she had things to do in separate rooms but didn't know which one was most important. After setting everything right with the world, I go back to the memory den and talk to the memory doctor. Unfortunately, this is where our journey will end. Like the inspiration for this video, it will be left unfinished. Paul was taken too early and I know he'll be missed by more than just his family. Thank you all for watching through this tribute video for him. And if you or somebody you know are struggling with addiction, please reach out to a professional. You are important. You matter. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.